Exclusively with us tonight is John Ludwig. He is a friend of Joran van der Sloot. He associated with him before he was arrested in Peru, knows him well. John Ludwig, thank you very much for joining us. The demeanor that you saw of Joran van der Sloot in that courtroom today, is that the Joran you knew? No, he really looks shaken up right now. The, uh, the yawning and all, he probably has been completely sleepless. Uh, he, I say the continuance right now without the plea, he really doesn't want to lock himself into something. Uh, he's just, hopefully he can try to get some kind of deal worked out with the prosecution because 35 years to life is not acceptable right now. So why do you think he looks scared? Because I don't think most people think they saw that in him today, that they saw actually an arrogance in him today. Uh, he's always had that kind of persona, you know. He's just trying, he doesn't want to look scared. He want to look like the tough guy, but I guarantee he's been sleepless and he's a nervous wreck and he, he is scared. He's just trying to be lackadaisical about it, but I'm sure he's scared to death. John Ludwig is joining us exclusively out of Washington, D.C. You know what everybody really wants to know, John? How did you meet Joran van der Sloot? It happened right after his father died and he came back from Thailand to Aruba for his dad's memorial. I just happened to bump into him at a gas station one day a couple days before memorial and he gave me his number. We ended up going out and hanging out that night, going to a bar and we just had a bond just instantly. I ended up going to his dad's memorial and I was really the only friend of his that I even showed up there. Uh, and since then he knew I was a friend and just about every day we were together going to casinos and fishing and all kinds of stuff. Have you corresponded with him since he's been in Lima? Yes, uh, about six or seven months after he got locked up, uh, we did some correspondence. Since then, I haven't really been able to correspond as much with them for whatever reason. So why do you think everybody has it so wrong? Because in this country, we look at him as a murderer. We look at someone, your inventor is a very bad person. Where is everybody going wrong on this? Or one thing that doesn't sit right with me is the clip we keep hearing of Stephanie Flores' father saying that uh, he's glad that his daughter, uh, you know, gave her life to, te to lock up a killer. As far as we know, uh, his daughter created a killer by going on his laptop and looking up stuff about Natalie. And then we, when he came back to the room, confronting him about, you know, what did you do to this girl? And, you know, that's when, I guess, the altercation happened. And... Stephanie lost her life. If she hadn't have been nosy and confronted him about that, then maybe she wouldn't have died. If she, w if she was worried, she should have just left the room and not made a confrontation like that. She created a killer as far as I'm concerned. We, we don't know if he was a killer before that.